guys and girls, welcome back to Pommy and Oz. I hope we're all doing really well. And uh, we're on the eve of the Carlton game, so let's get into a preview. First of all, if you are new around here, please like, please subscribe. We're just on about 830 at the moment. If we can get 900 by the end of this week, that would be grouse. Your love and support means the world to me. So let's look at the history of these two sides and what makes up the story. So at the moment, Port Adelaide, as we know, they're 4-1 and one in the last five versus Carlton Football Club. It is heavily weighted in Port's favour. Carlton, we know last time out, they beat Gold Coast Suns by 11. It was a scrappy, real tenacious affair from the boys, but one that I think has grown in confidence in them. That is a game that Carlton would have lost up until recently, and they showed great and heart and courage, even though it, even though it wasn't quite going their way. Port Adelaide were very impressive against the Tigers. They won by two and really got the ball back on track after the disappointment the week previous. And they look really good. They really ground that win out and it was a very assured performance. That takes Carlton to even ledger, two and two. Port, they have the better ledger. They are three and one. Things to look out for where this battle will be won and lost by both sides. And that is pressure around the ground. It's going to be key to both sides. We know that Carlton at times have shown that when the pressure cooker situation comes on, they can fold. But we've also seen that from Port this year as well, particularly in the Eagles game. The ability of transition is incredibly important for both sides as well. Both sides do a lot of scoring from transition. And what is really important as well is that Port Adelaide have a tendency to really be suffer from that. They, they really look to alleviate that and really make their entries count. Tempo control is a key one as well. The ability to really hold the game. We saw the doggy, we saw the Eagles against Port really exemplify that and really learn to when to speed the game up, which plays into Port's hands, and when to slow it down and be a bit more patient. That is something that Cowan do traditionally struggle with. They're either level 5 or level 1. So that's going to be really interesting because if Port get control of the footy, they can dictate play. So it's going to be a real tempo battle. And inside 50 accumulation... Both sides have their habits of really getting a decent number of inside 50s and making, and it's about making them count. It's going to come down to that. Who will be able to get on top? Because both sides will have patches in this game where their midfield is on top. As we've seen historically throughout the year already, we're only at round five. We're using historical, and that is going to be a key battle. Let's look at the two teams then. Port Adelaide, let's see what they're good at so far and what's relevant to this game. What is their pressure around the ground? They're very strong. They really don't hemorrhage marks like a lot of sides do. They really keep you honest. And they really apply that pressure from the forward to the back line. They're very tough to score against because of this. They're really prudent. One of the top three ranking sides of the comp for their ability to really be prudent with the ball and stop you scoring. They also really have good strong forward pressure. It's real tough to get it out of your D50. Another thing as well is their fluent ball movement. Once they get going, they're very quick, they're very fast-paced, and they really do hurt. Once they get the ball in their hands, they can move it very quickly, and before you know it, you've got issues. They're one of the top five sides that make, are not making mistakes as well. So when they get the ball, it's very hard to get it off them. You're going to have to get it off them. You can't resort to hoping they'll make mistakes. We have seen from turnover and transition that this side is hurt though. And it is what the Eagles did very well against them. And it's something that Carlton do habitually do very well. Their scores from turnovers are always very high. And it's something that Carlton will look to. They are a rhythmical side as well. And if the rhythm is disjointed like the Eagles did of playing quick and then playing slow and bringing it into your terms, it has made them come unstuck. And we saw that in patches as well in Richmond towards the end of the game. It's going to be very intriguing if Carlton can show a bit of maturity because maturity will win this game. Let's look at Carlton Football Club then. This year, incidentally, Carlton have been one of the most top sides in the comp. They are the number one at clearances per game. And it's about using that strength to your advantage. The problem is, is we get the clearances, but they don't often go to Carlton. A staggering amount of them do result in nothing type entries. And that is something that Carlton are going to have to really alleviate here. If you're giving the ball back too easy to the Port Adelaide, they will find a way of hurting you. So that is something that Carlton are going to be looking for. When we do intercept, and we are one of the leading sides at intercepts, and we are one of the more efficient sides inside 50, as this says, we're top five for our efficiency inside 50, our transitional strength is going to be a key part of getting that efficiency start even better. And it's about using the ball cleverly. 
they do make that mistake and that is where their weakness is and we've got to use that we do know that last week jones and wheatering combined for 25 intercepts apiece they are absolute jets of footballers and we'll be looking at doc and sad to really get them intercepts from them two big blokes and look to hurt them on the counter and our efficiency we've got to use it we'll have zach williams back who's one of our better users and that is something that's going to play into our forward line it needs to be good Right levels of intensity and strength under pressure are two question marks of Carlton this season. We've seen it. They, they kind of are looking for that dial of when to turn it on and when not to. It's going to be very intriguing this week of if they can manage that. And it, again, it comes down to maturity. Let's look at the players then that we've talked about that will hopefully get us something. What is none other than our captain, Patrick Cripps? It's going to be someone that they're going to be looking at. And we know he likes playing Port. Averages 31 touches and 8 tackles versus Port alone. And this year's been a bit of a return to form for Patrick Cripps. Top 20 in clearances, top 10 in total centre clearances, and top 5 in contested possessions. And that is what we know about Cripps. One important thing as well is he's top 20 in score involvement. It's something he's added to his game this year. And that is going to be really key for Carlton. We're going to be looking for him to really get it going. 26 touches so far this year. And that was with a game where he was tagged heavily against Gold Coast. And one thing that Cripps has added to his game is his ability to bring other players around him. He's starting to get a real trust factor with the players. And against Paul, that is going to be so important. Because we need to get on top in the middle and then distribute it well. And they are going to target Cripps. We know that. We know Rockcliffe comes in for this one. He'll probably have a shy at Cripps as well. And it's something that Cripps has got to do. And he's done it very well this year. And that is do his job and not get entangled in any tussles. And he can hurt them. His ability to rest forward as well has really helped this season. Another guy we're going to look at, and this plays into our strengths, is the number two interceptor in the comp at the moment in Liam Jones. And he averages three intercept marks, incidentally, and has a winning one-on-one -on -one percentage versus Port. And this is something that people forget about him. We know we talk about the Charlie Dixon game last year. And this is something that we're going to be looking at him because they do target Charlie Dixon a lot. And we'll be looking at Liam Jones. Now, whether they play Wheatering in a one-on-one -on -one role, which I suspect they will do for the majority of the game, it's going to be intriguing if they deploy that like they did last couple of games with Liam Jones and let him run free on them for a, maybe a quarter or so or parts of it and really dare them because if he can get on top, it's going to really make them have a conscious effort of do we want to target him or do we go to maybe a lesser forward it's going to be intriguing of what happens with Liam Jones but he's integral at the moment because his ball use is impeccable he's, he's getting a lot of the ball as well 15 touches a game so far and he does the tough stuff he's contesting very well top 15 in the comp for that and he's really putting his body in his line top 20 in one percenters it's going to be a guy where this game could be won and lost with how he plays finally none other than our mercurial goal scorer on the minute he's got 15 goals already and incidentally he averages five marks and three goals a game against part adelaide and that is harry mckay and he's had a really good year so far and his numbers are absolutely phenomenal the number one marks inside 50 in the comp top five contested marks top six score involvements and top three goals he's having a great year and this is going to be one where we'll be looking at trying to get him involved he should have mcgovern back with him this week as well and that is going to help him out harry's movement off the ball is impeccable what he does how he competes how he brings it to ground and more importantly just the name at the minute will cause them to have attention i think Ilya Ilya will spend a bit of time on him because they like to use that as their counteract it should be a great tussle it's all going to be how the ball enters harry mckay's mitts who have we got to worry about from then well there's no surprise here and he's long been linked with carlton and he has a history with us and that is ollie wines averaging 24 touches this against us and five tackles and he's had a stellar year as well already top six for total touches top two in contested possessions and top 15 for effective disposals and inside 50s he's been the total footballer this year five clearances 30 touches and four tackles he's up and about and he's at his best and he's going to be someone that they'll be looking to really punish Cripps with trying to stop that we know we're going to have the walsh Cripps combination they've got a fearsome combination too as one of them is this bloke and he's going to be someone that we'll be looking to stop i'd imagine that ed kerner will probably spend a bit of time with boak and wines throughout this game both have the ability to impact the game. And this year, Ollie Wines has really added that efficiency 
to his total and really looking to impact in the transitional sense of the word. The other block we're going to look at from them is Alira Lear, and he has really enjoyed his time at Port Adelaide already. Top 20 in total contested marks, and against Carlton, he averages 5 marks and 13 touches. It's going to be intriguing how he does because his role for Port Adelaide this year has been really exemplary. He's really finding a lot of the ball, 17 touches and 6 marks, and he's really stopping players playing on him. He's also got that leg speed as well for someone his size, which is phenomenal. At 195, he's exceptionally quick. He really peels off his last man, looks to intercept hard, he attacks the ball, but he can also play you one-on-one -on -one and lock you down. It's a very dangerous threat in transition for them because he's got some talented players around him like Dan Houston and Darcy Byrne-Jones who can really set up defence and to attack very quickly. There'll be one player that we'll be looking to really hope Harry McKay gets on top of early who keeps him in his box because once he jumps out of the box, he can hurt you from just loose inside 50s and he's a guy that you're going to be looking to be strong with and make sure your delivery on whoever's on him is good. And the final guy we're going to look at is a guy that just seems to get better with age, doesn't he? And that's Travis Boak. 21 touches and two goals a game against Carlton. He's no stranger to doing well against us. And his season this year has been very good. Top five in centre clearances, top five in goal assists, and top 10 in centre clearances. He's the perfect dynamic footballer. And there's a lot of midfielders there as well who have effective disposals this year. He's one of them. He's been very tasty this year. 28 touches, four tackles, and just under two goal assists a game. He's really adapting the game and brings them in. Just under a goal a game as well. He's going to be someone that, if he gets on top of it early, he really drives them very quickly. And he's going to be someone that I think Ed Kerner will probably spend 70% of his game fishing him out and stopping him because Boak is the player that can find the players that can hurt you. He'll find you Robbie Gray's in space. He'll find you Charlie Dixon's in space. And what's more is if you can stop that ball entry to them, he also has the ability to change the game himself. He's an absolute strong footballer and one that we've got to respect. That's the preview then. I think it's going to be a real tough game for Cowan. It's going to be really intriguing and how they go. We know Teague said, which is much to the chagrin of many players this week, that we're going to try our best to win. And it did seem negative. I didn't see it that way. I think he's right. If we play our best, we can win this game. It's going to be tough. I'm going to tip Carlton by five points. I think it'll be tight. But I think this could be the game on paper where we learn a lot about them. And I think this could be the game that we look back on paper is the turning point. And it's going to be a real tough one. It's a big battle for them. This is probably the toughest task. Both sides have got injuries. We've been littered by them. So have support in the last couple of weeks. It's going to be huge, but if they can get over this hurdle, they won't fear much because it doesn't get much better than Port Adelaide at the moment. That's the preview then. Let me know who you think is going to win. As always, have a great weekend. Palm out.